Hi everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm Shannon Rogers, your host, and welcome into my shop. There are a lot of ways to cut dados by hand, and I think I've tried just about all of them. The router plane has made quite a reputation for itself lately as a great tool for going in and flattening the bottom of dados. Getting it started, this can be a little bit tedious. So a lot of times I'll grab myself a, a crosscut back saw like this carcass saw, and I'll saw out the two walls of the dado. I'll chop out the bulk of the waste using a chisel or these kind of cranked neck chisels. I love these things for that purpose. You just kind of pare away and it, the, the, most of the waste just kind of pops out. Then I can go in with the dado, set my depth stop and get an exact flat bottom dado. An even more efficient way is by using, duh, a dado plane. Dado plane has uh, a double, double bladed nicker that actually scores both walls of the dado and the blade itself sinks, removes all the stuff in between. It's got a built-in depth stop so you can get a dado with just a single tool set to a certain depth. And the only issue is, is the dados have a fixed width. So you either can buy several data planes in the width that you're looking for, or you can use a spacer technique that I blogged about a while ago on a post called the adjustable width data plane. Uh, in the end, I think uh, period workers, cabinet makers, oftentimes had a couple of these data planes. The other thing you can do, of course, if you have a 3 8 inch dado, you can make a 3 8 inch cut and then make one right next to it. 3 8 plus 3 8 is 3 quarters of an inch. So it's a couple ways to do this, but the key is you've only got one tool to do that. Well, kind of a variation on the saw out the walls of the dado is a more specialized tool. And this just came into my possession. This is what's known as a dado saw or sometimes a stair saw. This is a, a very specific saw with the, the blade raises up and down into the body and the, the handle, the body itself, acts as the depth stop. It, it basically, it's just meant for cutting across the grain. Uh, it's named a stair saw because in the, the stringers, the, the sides of stairs, you had to cut in dados for all those stair treads. And it can be generally uh, at least a 12 inch wide cut. It was usually a thicker cut because the stair tread was, you know, one and a quarter to one and a half inches thick. And using a dado plane, you weren't gonna find too many dado planes in that width and having to stack it up like that was a little bit more difficult. So we've taken the back saw method of sawing out the walls. You can make any width of dado you want, but now, You've integrated a depth stop by making the body or the handle of the plane act as your depth stop. This stair saw is made by CME Toolworks. They have a great store on eBay. I actually have a bow saw from them. They've got actually a treadle lathe for sale, some router planes, great mallets. It's just a, a really good company. And uh, he's come up with some interesting innovations. I've used vintage stair saws before when I've been volunteering at the museum and they tend to break a lot. The, the handles can be a little bit fragile over the years, but more importantly, the, the nuts that hold the blade firmly in here, they tend to strip over time, they don't hold as well, so people really tighten them down. What happens is these thin walls here tend to break. Well, CME Toolworks has inlaid a brass plate in here to really strengthen that up, and we've got saw nuts that hold it together. The blade itself has um, slots in it that allow you to loosen up the, the screw with just a regular flathead screwdriver and lower the blade or tuck it up into the body. So let's put it to use and see how it works. Got a piece of uh, eight inch wide stock here. I'm gonna cut a dado in it to match this, uh, I think this is about three quarter inch soft maple here. First I wanna lay out the first wall of my dado, so I'll grab my layout square, reference it off the edge, grab a marking knife, putting the flat edge of the knife against the square, I'll mark a nice line. Now I want to mark the other edge of the dado. So what I can do is take my mating piece, the soft maple, and I can drop it into 
that knife line. Hold it right up against it and with the knife mark the other edge. And if you have trouble lining this up, some people will come in with a chisel and kind of cut in a V groove like the first class saw knots you see a lot of times and the mating board will just kind of drop down into that V groove. This is really nice kind of soft basswood so it's really easy to mark out and I've got a good knife line here so I'm just gonna line it up by eye, come in with my knife and mark the other side of the board. I always start with kind of a light cut on the knife first and then once I've got that established I'll kind of increase my pressure. That way on that first stroke the, the knife doesn't have a tendency to kind of get stuck in the grain. It's not that big of a deal when you're going across the grain but still a good idea to kind of start with light, light pressure and work your way down. Now I have the data lines incised into my board and I'm ready to start sawing. I'm going to grab a bench hook or I sometimes call this my paring hook because it's got a nice low profile fence here and just for good measure let's go ahead and use a hold fast just kind of secure this in place just so it won't move around on us at all. So here's the stair saw and you can see the blade only projects a certain distance and you tighten it up with these nuts and you can raise it and lower it. You can cut first class saw notch here so uh, I'm actually going to use this crank neck chisel. That's what I love these things for because you can come in across the grain and just drop the corner into the wood and work right across there. Because you've got a good knife line, the wood just shears away right on that corner. I'll go ahead and do the other side too. Oop. Getting a little deep there. I suppose that's another way you can cut a dado is just use the chisel like this. But trust me, there are more efficient ways to do this. But that's another interesting thing about this saw is right now it's set up to cut on the pull stroke. Certainly I can switch this around and cut on the push stroke, but this is the way it came set up from CME Toolworks. So um, let's see how it, how it works. So I'll make my first cut on the far side here and the blade just kind of drops right in there. It's a little bit odd because the saw itself obscures my line. So I, I, it's hard to see really what I'm doing. So I'd say just, you know, first use here, that first class saw cut, that little V groove is probably mandatory just to give you something positive to register it against. Now right away the, the first problem I see is this is cutting on the pull stroke so um, I have to hold it in place but there's this extra handle out here and I've, I've found in working with the vintage ones this actually helps a little bit to saw but obviously this bench hook is set for the push stroke so I'm going to ditch the bench hook right now. So I've just moved the board down to my end vise and pinched it between dogs. So it should hold a little better now. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit easier to use both handles here. But it's actually, for me, in used to doing western sawing, it almost feels a little awkward. I kind of like one hand better. You do have to focus on keeping the cut vertical, 
but with these strong walls here, I've really got a good reference, uh, reference face that I can eye it against. And you work until it stops cutting like that. The bottom is actually referencing off the board. So it stopped cutting. Now, I think if you're, you've got both hands on here, you've got more even pressure. Um, you probably noticed I stopped cutting back here long before I stopped cutting here. And I think that's probably because as I pull back the, the toe of the saw is maybe skating up a little bit. So two hands will probably make it cut a little bit more efficiently. But for giggles, I'm gonna loosen this up and I'm gonna switch the blade around and make it work on the push stroke. So I'm just gonna loosen up these saw nuts. You don't have to undo them all the way because as you see, it's an open-ended slot in the blade. So they just slide out, which is good because the, the other side of this nut is really wedged into place. It's like, a, imagine a carriage bolt with a square head under this and it's um, registered in place so it doesn't rotate on you. So I'm gonna turn this around and set it for a push stroke cut. And when I set it all the way up inside, this is the setting I had before. So um, there's a, a, another point I should mention. The minimum depth of cut you can set this for, or at least to use the depth stop, is a quarter inch. I suppose I could file some off the blade if I wanted to go even shallower than that, but seriously, if you're cutting a dado that shallow, um, just use the chisel or use your router plane. Okay, so now it's set for the push stroke. So I'm gonna bring my bench hook back to bear. I probably don't even need the hold fast at this point because I've got the fence right here. All right, it's a little hard to get started. You gotta have a real light touch. I think the, the hang of this saw, if you will, um, the pressure of the handle, it's kind of pushing down an angle to the teeth. Um, if the saw were kind of a little bit more in line with the teeth down here, similar to a typical back saw, it would probably start a lot easier. But because I'm up high, the force of this is actually driving the teeth down into the work, which, you know, I guess is to be expected because you have to, you have to kind of loft the handle up over the work or you're going to be bumping your knuckles as you do this. So a nice light cut. Oh, and that's really where this front handle comes into play because you can kind of guide things along. It's more of a fingertip grip than anything else. Okay. Okay, we bottomed out and you know, I'm surprised. This does actually cut a lot better on the pull stroke. I'm gonna look at the tooth geometry here. And you know, this doesn't look anything spectacular. It looks like a pretty typical cross cut filing. It's maybe 15 to 20 degrees of rake angle. Um, you know, I'm not even gonna guess at the fleam angle here, but there's definitely some fleam on here but it does seem to want to cut better on the pull stroke. And a lot of that may have to do with that, that hang angle. But um, for the most part, I mean, it tracks really easily. It, once I got it started, uh, you could see it's just a matter of kind of a lighter touch to get it to work. But I have two 
very well-defined walls to this dado now. I just need to chop it out and I want to mark a baseline here real quick. So I'm just going to grab my marking gauge and set it off of the saw itself. And I got to say, looking at that gauge line there, you can see it exactly lines up with those curves. So I've got a, you know, very, very vertical and dead even saw cuts there, which is, that's pretty cool. So I am going to use the hold fast to clamp this back down and I'm just going to grab a chisel. using one of my bench chisels here because I, I want to kind of pound on it a little bit. That crank neck chisel is set pretty delicately. I, I don't like hammering on it. It's uh, set for a 20 degree bevel. So it's just not real, uh, real conducive to pounding on it with a mallet. But with the bulk of the waste removed, it's great for pairing because I can just drop it in the bottom and just kind of hold it down with my index finger and work away any remaining waste. And you can certainly use a router plane here. But uh, what can I say? I like my pairing chisels. Flip around and get in my baseline from the other side. Work a little bit of the fuzz out of the corners here. And I mean, I'm choosing just to use a pairing chisel here, but this is definitely where the router plane excels, a good repeatable way to get that dado to depth. Now let's see if we've got a good fit. I'd say that's a good fit. Any dado that is hammer tight is a good dado in my book. It's definitely a friction fit. If you look, I've got no gaps along the edges, no gaps on either side. And here, let me pull it out and set it flush with the end so you can see the look on the end. Because I think if you're doing uh, case piece, bookshelf, or something like that where this is the front and maybe you don't have a face frame, you want this to be a good tight joint. And uh, you can see no gap at all. Obviously, I'd probably want to shoot the end grain there a little bit, but it's a dead perfect gap on both sides of the board. If you can see that right in there. So what's the verdict? It's a pretty cool little saw. It's gonna take some getting used to for me. You can see the, the saw cuts didn't go quite as, as easily as you know grabbing a, a regular back saw. I probably would have gone it about twice as fast in those cuts with a regular back saw. But that also may be just um, usage factor. This was the very first time I used this saw. So I'm not certainly not gonna pass judgment on it. I think it's a, a hang issue there. I may flip it back to the pull stroke and work with a little bit more, but on a first use to get a dado with a dead square, dead vertical walls to exactly the same depth is pretty cool. 
Now, if I were just cutting a couple of dados, um, I think I would still probably go with the dado plane. Um, but one of the things with the dado plane is you do have a tendency to get a lot of blowout or spelching on the far end. You can certainly plane from both sides, but at that point, you know, you might as well just go back to the saw and router plane. If you've got to flip this around, uh, what you really want to do is just plane straight across. So if you're working on a case where, say, you're going to rab it out the back and put a, a case back in, you can just plane straight across with the data plane. It's really, really fast. But for finer work where this is going to be exposed, I think this makes an excellent solution. And for work where you've got to do a lot of these, say you're making a bookshelf with like six or eight shelves in it, and you've got to make, what, eight shelves times two cuts per side, um, so, and then two ends of it, you're talking about 32 saw cuts to the exact depth and straight up and down. This sucker will be awesome for that. And I think that again is where the stair saw moniker comes from. Because you imagine in your average staircase, how many stair treads are you dadoing into the stringers? This is where this really comes into play. And I think it'll be a valuable tool in my arsenal. Now, one of the other things that I do like about this over some of the vintage ones I've worked with is it has these kind of U-shaped cutouts on the side, and it provides a little bit better sight line into the blade itself. But I'm not going to lie to you, if you're really used to working with just a straight saw to cut these, you have much poorer visibility with your saw blade with this. The, the body blocks most of it, so you can kind of work off to the side, but I've find if I'm, I'm kind of doing this, the handle's going to want to tend to tilt with me and I'm probably going to throw my cut off a little bit. So I think in order to use this, it's probably imperative that you make those starter first class saw cut notches just so this has something to ride in. But um, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, kudos to the folks at CME Toolworks for making this. Um, you know, uh, give, it a, give it a shot if you think you're in a position where you're going to need to make a whole lot of dados and the dado plane is maybe not your, your best solution um, because they become really difficult to find and they've gotten to be really, really expensive. So just another, another alternative in the many, many alternatives to cutting dados by hand. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.